has a buyer's market officially returned right here to the Treasure Valley. Let's go ahead and dive into all that information and figure out if it has right after this. Welcome back after the break, everybody. Mike Petrus here, your star realtor of star and the Treasure Valley back again with another educational video this time on deciding whether or not and deciphering whether or not we are truly in a buyer's market. As we know from prior videos that I have came out with, we have noticed that the inventory has definitely gone up, but most importantly, the buyer's demand has cooled. And why is the buyer's demand cooled? Well, because we're just feeling it in our pocketbooks every single day. As mentioned, CPI is at an all-time high or inflation, uh, even though the Fed is saying that they are hopeful that they are capping it. Uh, but of course, over the last couple of months, we have noticed that they just haven't been able to do that. But what does that mean for you as a buyer? It just means that you're spending more money on everyday things that you need to survive on, like food, gas, etc. Cap that off with a high mortgage rate too as well, which we are still sitting in about the high fives today, which we'll get to here in a little later. It's just kind of more or less squeezing more money out of the average everyday buyer's pocket and hence the buyers are cooling. So now that the gap is here, are we really seeing the shift move over from a seller's market that we had about a year ago and a really hardcore seller's market that we had a year, year and a half ago, more to a buyer's market. And what does that mean for you as a buyer? Well, first off, we have noticed that the median home prices are coming down here in the Treasure Valley, which meaning that sellers are re price reducing their homes in order to be more competitive with somebody else that is out there in the Treasure Valley trying to sell uh, roughly the same product. So that also gives the buyers a lot more options to be able to go out there and purchase a home. But most importantly, what it's doing is it's also forcing, not only forcing prices to come down uh, from the sellers that are out there, but sellers now are also starting to give concessions at record numbers. And what do I mean by concessions? I mean like picking up things like your closing costs, et cetera. So let's go ahead and let's dive in, especially today. I will be joined by Matthew Pfeiffer with Axia Home Loans, and we're gonna go ahead and discuss if you're able to get those concessions coming from a seller, what you really should be doing with them. So briefly, let's just go ahead and take a look via Alta's research and see where the markets really kind of stand today. And of course, I'm not going to sit and pick on every single city here in the Treasure Valley. Let's just kind of uh, more or less look at Boise and Star Idaho. Uh, as you can see, according to their market action index, we have definitely kind of shifted more towards the buyer side. But as I mentioned in prior videos, can we reach the buyer's market before an actual algorithm or an actual six months of inventory, which is and leaning over uh, six months of inventory, leads us into a buyer's market? Well, considering the buyer's demand has cooled and where inventory is at, and considering the fact that price reductions are happening at record levels here in the Treasure Valley, plus concessions are coming way up to levels in order to be able to sell. I can officially say that we are really in a buyer's market today. So buyers, keep that in mind when you're out shopping. Uh, expect to pay some pay less in the overall median home price or maybe the overall price because of the price reductions that are coming down. And also, if you have a strong negotiator coming through, a great realtor, please feel free to give me a call. Love to discuss that with you. We can go ahead and talk about running after concessions to pick up your closing costs, et cetera. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at Boise. Again, the price decreases are at 64% of the active listings that are out there. And our market action, the two that I want to really kind of look at here is continuing to drop. So to just let you know that the buyers uh, is are softening out here as the inventory is going up. And if we are taking a look at Star Idaho, same thing. 
Uh, we noticed that 63% of the active listings that are out on the market right now uh, are seeing price decreases and that market action is actually looking like it's starting to flatline here. Uh, please watch Mikey's monthly market updates uh, for July of 2022 as to whether or not I think that we might be seeing some stabilization coming up. I'll go ahead and put that at the end of this video. Look forward to uh, seeing you there on that one. Hey everybody, welcome back. Mike Petrus here. Again, your star realtor of Star in the Treasure Valley. Here with my awesome guest, Matthew Pfeiffer from hey Axia Home Loans. And we're gonna go ahead and discuss. Since I've already mentioned that we're really in a buyer's market, uh, the values on these houses are seeing price reductions all over the place and really kind of at record numbers and coming down. But also the concessions are coming back up as well. And I got Matt here to go ahead and explain should we go ahead and use those concessions really to kind of buy down the rate on an average mortgage nowadays? Or should we use those concessions and really kind of apply them towards the closing costs, move forward and kind of generally wait for a recession to happen and the rates naturally come down lower? Matt, what are your thoughts on this? Yes, <laughs> that's it. No, yeah. Actually, that's pretty perfect. Is, uh, he is, as he was explaining right there, and we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, I'm not a fan of buying down rates and that comes almost in any climate. There's very, very few times that I suggest that. And obviously every deal is different. Every transaction is different. Every uh, contract you write and the different concessions and they all need to be looked at individually. But generally I'm not a fan of buying down the rate because we, we see cycles, we see interest rates go up and down. And I've always been a fan of never paying for what I can get later on for free. So I would take those those concessions that you're getting, whatever the amount, or if a seller just has or a buyer just has extra cash, and they're thinking about buying that down, I would put that towards the, the payment or towards the price, lower that payment, and then later on when rates dip, which inevitably I think they're going to dip, um, you just do that refinance for cheap. You get a better rate. You have the uh, cash applied towards the balance, and uh, you're gonna have a better loan for the rest of that life. Wow, absolutely awesome. And uh, that's great advice, totally. So I, I always kind of mention to, and just kind of a little off topic here, because we do know that historically when recessions hit, the rates will come back down. Uh, you know, I've said that there's probably like a lot of goofery going on in the numbers that are really kind of being reported coming out there. Uh, but everybody I'm sure is just kind of anticipating. And I know we don't have a crystal ball in terms of when the effects of the recession, by definition, that's already gonna hit is really gonna come in. But I mean, just from like your overall thoughts, when do you think that the actual recession's going to hit to the point to where rates will start kind of dipping back down uh, to levels that could be affordable for your average average everyday home buyer? So again, I, I wish that I knew, I wish I had that crystal yeah. ball also. I probably wouldn't be in this industry, I'd be doing something else. Uh, but as far as, uh, as we can watch history and we watch them come back down, I do see them coming back down a little bit. Maybe not to where they were two years ago but they're gonna come back down and um, you know, I've heard it best put, you, you marry the home, you date the rate. So you get in the house and later on, the average uh, mortgage lasts six years, four and a half years somewhere, you know, it varies mm -hmm. in between there, be, um, between different types. But you don't wanna spend a lot of money on something right now and then find out that rates are gonna drop after, like we said, it's gonna happen. Time-wise, um, I've seen people saying that it'd be a year to a year and a half, and that was probably starting around six months ago. So I'd say we're anywhere between six months and a year before we see a reduction in those rates. And um, again, to where and from where, I don't know exactly where that's gonna be, but I just know that right now, if I was in the market and I'm looking at, I had extra five to $7,000 in seller concession, I put that towards the closing costs. I put that towards the, the loan um, instead of uh, buying down the rate right now, because you're just, you're gonna hate it in a couple of years, if at max, when those rates drop and you say, oh, well, I paid you know seven grand for that rate and now it's free. Right, exactly, exactly. And then I guess the last question that I've got for you here real quick is that we know that back in the day, the Fed was you know purchasing up these mortgage-backed securities to kind of, uh, inf or no, I wouldn't say inflate, but stabilize our economy or, or more or less kind of uh, trickery it, if, if right. I can put it any direction. So another question that I've always heard from people is, do you think that rates will actually get back down into the threes? Or do you think that rates will probably, like if we're staying in the fours, that that's kind of more or less gonna be our new normal that we can kind of expect? You know, or is that another thing that we don't have a crystal ball? <laughs> from here, um, I can just look at what history has. And I would say that rates in the fours would be great. How, I mean, if something, 
we, we didn't predict 2016. We didn't predict the last one when those things were dropping like mad after um, the Brexit was a big one. Um, Donald Trump was a big one. These, these events that came up that just caused a massive dip in those rates. We can say that, yeah, I mean, they're, they're going to drop a little bit, but I don't think they're going to get back down to that level just personally. I think that looking at history, uh, the historical rates, um, if we can get them into the fours, I mean, that's I'd be happy there. And uh, I think most Americans that were looking to buy a house would be, OK, that's that's pretty good. I'm, I'm satisfied with that. I know I didn't catch the perfect, you know, 2.75 that was out there for a while. But <laughs> I didn't catch it either. No, no, <laughs> neither. But uh, yeah, it's it's uh, fours are going to be a good rate, I think. And I don't see that as being too far, especially with rates where that right now, because um, as you look at what they dip after the recession, um, I think it'll put us right back down there. All right, fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Matt. I really mm -hmm. do appreciate you uh, coming down and speaking to the audience. Of course, uh, if you'd like to get a hold of Matt, uh, Matt, please go ahead and give out your information and feel free to reach out to him. He's really friendly, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> totally right. messing around. Yeah, uh, just reach me at 208-617-0865. You can text or call. Um, yeah, and, or just contact Mike. And he's one of the most knowledgeable uh, lenders out there. I mean, really, mm -hmm. I love speaking with him talking with him about this and he'll definitely guide you down the right path. Also, just to kind of let you know, if you are looking for a VA loan, Matt here is also a Lieutenant in the, uh, in the Air Force Guard out here. Uh, he's actually uh, stationed over at Gallon and he does uh, really good for our country and has done for what about the last 15, 20 years, right? You were in the right Navy now. before then. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you yeah, give Matt a call. He looks forward to hearing from you. I look forward to hearing from you. But let's continue this video and move down and see some more information. So first off, I want to thank Matthew Pfeiffer of Axia Home Loans for coming out and doing this video here with me today. And I do hope that you found his information useful. And of course, if you're trying to get a hold of him and you're thinking about jumping into this market and you are looking for a loan, please feel free to reach out to him at 208 617-0865. Again, that's 208-617-0865. So I just want to tie, touch upon too, I know that Matt had went ahead and said, it's best to go ahead and use our concessions towards the closing costs uh, and towards uh, things that are viable instead of really trying to use them to buy down a rate at this moment. And of course, as he mentioned, because we're really seeing you know, all indications of a recession right around the corner. As I've mentioned many times in many other videos, is a recession by definition here? Yes, we have had two negative quarters of GDP and another strong indicator of that is when inflation is above 4% and unemployment is below 4%. So by definition, are we there? But let's go ahead and let's dive in a little bit further by taking a look at the 10-year and the two-year treasury yields. These are also strong indicators to investors of what is happening around the corner. And generally the rule of thumb is as we start seeing price or we start seeing inversions happen in the 10 and two-year treasury yields, it's a strong indicator that a recession is coming along. And if we and it mainly on a daily basis or even a weekly basis, small inversions can happen here and there. And typically, even though it can rock investors' confidence, you know, in terms of investing into bonds, and the 10-year Treasury yield does correlate to uh, the overall mortgage interest rate that is charged. But as we start seeing the inversions happen on a month-to-month -month over rate, that is another strong indicator of a recession coming around the corner. And if we're taking a look at the 10-year treasury yield over here, we can see back in June, we saw an inversion, went up a bit. We saw back in July, same thing happened. And of course, our little ones that, we, that are kind of insignificant, but can still rock investor confidence. We're starting to see it come up. But again, can we see them start to come down again as another inversion? We'll just have to wait and see. But yes, but the other thing too that we're seeing, and that's why the Fed is putting on the brakes, is that if we're taking a look at the two-year treasury yield, when the two-year treasury yield outpaces the, the yield in the 10-year treasury yield, we also know that we're kind of sloping down uh, in an inversion kind of area too as well. So that is why the Fed is trying to put the brakes on the two-year treasury yield, because that's generally their job, okay, is to make sure that you kind of get more of an investment 
uh, or you get more of a return out of a long term than you do a short term. And right now that is not happening. You're kind of getting more out of the two year than you are out of the 10 year. I know a lot of this is probably going way over your head, but Friday, or it could be going over your head. I apologize. But come Friday, when I do uh, the interest rate update for the week, I'll go ahead and break this down a little bit further so that we can all be on the same page together. So is a recession here by definition? Yes, it is. It are the indicators in the two-year and the 10-year treasury yields by the inversions happening on a month-to-month -month basis also showing their heads? Yes. Do recessions necessarily hit right away? No. Sometimes most uh, investors and most uh, financial analysts say that recessions take generally about a year, uh, maybe even a year and a half to hit. But considering the climate of where everything is at and more or less the goofery that I think is kind of happening in the numbers reporting uh, when it comes to, say, the ISM, which is our productivity or even our jobs report, et cetera, I think it's more or less, and I'm not trying to cry it's conspiracy, but it's more or less to stave off negative economy data before the midterm elections. So do I see possibly after the midterms Things starting to hit recession-wise, yes, I do. And of course, we know historically when a recession hits, interest rates go down. So again, Matt is completely right. Let's go ahead. Let's use the concessions that we get from our sellers towards your closing costs, etc. Wait it out to be able to refinance down the road and get yourself a better rate. Well, thank you very much, everybody. And of course, buyers, if you are looking to jump into this market, feel free to give me a call. I can be reached at 208-715-STAR. Again, that's 208-715-7827. And if you're looking to begin your home shopping experience today, please visit my website at www.yourstarrealtor.com. Also, if you're looking to move in or looking to move into uh, the Treasure Valley here from out of state, please click in the description below, download my free relocation guide so that way you're in the know before you decide to make the move. Also, please feel free to comment below. Would love to hear your thoughts on uh, the state of this economy and where you think that things are headed. Please comment and then also click that subscribe button below. Click the notification bell so that way you're in tune with all the videos that I do come up with in the future. Well, thanks again very much, everybody. I look forward to the day that we speak. I look forward to the day I call you my neighbor. Until then, God bless. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.